Hello, I'm Bernard Kast. I'm usually known as Military History Visualized and today we are at the Tank Museum for my bottom five tanks. Now, my is not entirely correct. When the Tank Museum asked me for a bottom five, I was a bit in a pickle because I don't really dislike any tank. So what I did is I looked at the German military archives. So this is why we are in the Tank Museum archives to look for nice quotes or very negative quotes about different tanks. So be aware, this does not really reflect my ranking of the tanks. So this is more ranked on the rate of the burn. And so, well, enough, enough said, let's get started. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. At number five we have the T-72 and for this we have a German report from 1990 that compares the T-72 of East Germany with the Leopard 1A5 of the Bundeswehr. And it notes, Summary assessment. T-72 is not a sophisticated single weapon system for a wide range of tasks that enables the crew to act independently. It is a product for order tactics that compensate for qualitative weaknesses in massive operations. Operational principle. T-72 is not a Bundeswehr adequate replacement for the Leopard 1A5 because it does not meet the many requirements of the Bundeswehr for tank operations, it has serious disadvantages in combat, no effective combat in motion and, at night, restricted visibility. It conceptually compensates for low quality by superior quantity. It does not technically meet the educational goals of military leaders on mission tactics, but prevents a deviation from one's given mission, blinders to the side, no visibility and driving possibility to the rear. It meets the special requirements of the Warsaw Pact in an excellent way conceptually, technically and qualitatively, but not those of the Bundeswehr. In contrast to all the other main battle tanks in the Bundeswehr, it would completely dissolve the uniformity of training we have established. Big thank you here to Kampf mit Kette for pointing me to this source and be aware that the statements about the Warsaw Pact doctrine might not be entirely valid, but that is something we can discuss in this video. At number four, the M3 Grant, and the Germans noted in an undated document about the firepower the following. The USA armored fighting vehicles, General Stuart Lee and Grant, are still equipped according to obsolete pattern with many weapons, two guns. The 3.7 cm gun with high muscle velocity was supposed to be the armor piercing weapon, the 7.5 cm gun, the weapon effective against unarmored targets. However, since both weapons not only did not complement each other, but also hindered each other, besides, later, a caliber of 3.7 cm was no longer capable of penetrating a modern tank. It was very quickly abandoned. And they also noted something about the armor. In terms of armor protection, the Americans give preference to cast hulls and turrets, probably only for production reasons. In order to achieve the same ballistic resistance as with rolled steel, the armor thickness must be increased by 20 to 30 percent. In general, the armor strength of US American armored fighting vehicles known so far is no longer sufficient for today's warfare. And in a 1942 document, they also mentioned that in comparison to Soviet tanks, the firepower is limited due to the limiting firing arc of the M3. At number three, we have the Panther tank. And if, if, if you look at the Panther and the different opinions, they go a wide range along. And for me, I withhold my final judgment because there's quite some research to be done still. And I'm only certain about one thing about the Panther. It is probably the most controversial German tank of the Second World War. Now, this will fall out of line a bit with the different quotes. I originally had very many different quotes here from German documents, but it was just getting extremely complicated. So I dialed it down to just one comment, and it's about the combat debut of the Panther during the Battle of Kursk. And it states, 
The Panzer IV and Tiger were also not spared. The fact that the Panthers appeared on the battlefield for the first time exposed them to general interest. Comparisons with other tank formations were not made. Therefore, command authorities and troops quickly came to the hasty conclusion, the Panther is no good. And all the other comments by the Germans are very similar. You have some negatives, you have some positives, and it ultimately comes down, if you make a judgment about the Panther, which quote you pick and you don't pick. So it's a lot about cherry or cherry picking, depending on what you want to do. At number two, we have the Churchill, particularly variants one to three, because the Germans got their hands on the Churchills after the failed raid at Dieppe. And in September 1942, they wrote the report and about the guns they noted the following. The 7.62 vehicle cannon, the three inch howitzer of the tank is poor and obsolete. The four centimeter vehicle cannon two pounder is obsolete in design and effect. The 5.7 centimeter vehicle cannon six pounder does not match the Russian guns of the same caliber in performance. Nothing new or northworthy has been found in captured ammunition. They also made a statement about the armor, which was also not particularly pleasant. The armor of the tank is strong, but the material can be described as poor and cannot be compared with the armor used on the German or Russian tanks. This is also shown by the penetration tests. Of course, there was far more to this report and there were also various errors, something I cover in depth on my channel. At number one, the highest 30 Schützen Panzer Lang, literally meaning rifleman tank long, but basically it's an armored personnel carrier. Now, this is a lesser known vehicle for a very good reason, and in this newspaper article, the gloves come off. Here, your long overdue article from the perspective of a private. Alert! Third company of the Panzer Grenadier Battalion mounts its vehicles to reach the staging area 12 kilometers away, as ordered. Only six of the total of 15 HS-30 are operational. The others lie in the workshop waiting to be taken apart. Spring fractures on frozen field clots of farmland, engine defects and repeated transmission damage to the CDBI Miracle Transmission, whose successor Wilson is no better, are the causes. The journey begins with six out of 15. On the 12 km approach, three more vehicles break down with defects, as usual. In the last maneuver, the battalion only had the combat strength of half a company after three days of exercise. So finally, three proud Schützenpanzer Lang reached the target. The Panzergrenadier are satisfied. With these vehicles, they will never reach the Soviet border zone. A big thank you here to the Leopard 2 gunner, Tobias, for pointing me to this gem of a burn. I hope you liked this excursion into the German archives and reports. If you want to see more about that stuff, be sure to check out my channels. Big thank you here to the Tank Museum at Bovington. Make sure to support them on Patreon and subscribe to their channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.